Would you like to know how to avoid registering your drone and spending time and money getting a drone pilot license? Well, stick around. That's what we're going to talk about in today's video. Okay, so first things first, you do not need to register your drone. If you purchase a drone that is under 250 grams, you don't have to register with the FAA. Of course, this can vary from country to country and by location. So I would find a really good resource. I like to use UAV Coach dot com backslash drone laws really good website very thorough i'll put the link in the description below now there are some advantages to not registering your drone let's talk about them there is no registration process there's no paperwork to fill out and you're not giving out any personal information there's no fees involved in the U.S., you will pay $5 every three years to keep your registration. And except for following some basic local rules and laws about flying drones, you can fly your drone right out of the box. Now, the main disadvantage to not registering your drone is that it would not be traceable back to you if you lost it in flight and someone else found it. When you want your drone back? Now, the DJI Find My Drone feature is great, but if you cannot get access to the area that you lost it, you might wish you had registered it. If you want to find out how the DJI Find My Drone feature works, you can click or tap on the card above. I have a short video on it. In addition to not having to register a drone that's under 250 grams, there's also no need for a Part 107 pilot's license. Of course, this can also vary from country to country and location. Now, there are two different types of people who fly drones. There's what's known as a recreational flyer, or also known as a hobbyist and then there are professionals. The benefit to being a recreational flyer or hobbyist is that you are not required to get a Part 107 pilot's license. So there's no stressing out about taking a test and spending money on it, and you won't have to worry about taking future courses in order to maintain that license. You can simply just fly your drone right out of the box. The disadvantage to being a recreational or hobbyist without your Part 107 license is that you will not be able to request special permission to fly in restricted or controlled areas. A great example of this is when I was staying in the Tahoe Keys area of Tahoe, California. I was not able to fly near the condo that we we're staying at. They wouldn't even let me take off because I was in a controlled airspace of a nearby small regional airport. Now, if I had my Part 107 license, I simply could have filled out the paperwork before the family trip and then been given permission ahead of time. Air traffic control and the FAA just want to know who and what is in the air, especially near an airport. Professionals who use their drone to make money are going to be required to get a Part 107 license. Now, if you want some ideas on how to make money with a drone, you can click or tap on the card above. I made a short video about that. I have a quick tip. I personally want to get my Part 107 license but I'm a terrible test taker and studying a manual stresses me out, which is why I paid for a prep course through dronepilotgroundschool.com. I'll put the link in the description down below. If you're not one to pick up a manual and understand everything on your own, then I recommend you do some shopping around for a course to get you prepared. Now, I haven't started my training as of yet, but when I do, I'm going to share my progress as well as what I think about the training course on this channel. Before watching this video, the weight of a drone probably didn't matter much to you. So hopefully I've given you something to think about. Now besides whether being a recreational, a hobbyist, or a professional, there's also those occasions where the small compact size of a DJI Mini 2 with a 4K camera connected to it is just easier to throw in a bag and take off on the go. Not to mention if you're vacationing in certain countries, you cannot fly a drone over 250 grams without jumping through a bunch of hoops. So there's that too. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have any comments, if you have any questions, keep leaving them down below. I love reading them. If you wish to stick around to the next video, I will show you just how fast the DJI Mini 2 can fly and why speed matters.